All right, um, we're at two minutes in, and I, I, I do want to respect everybody's time, so we'll get started. Uh, so welcome everybody to join us today. My name is Ji Ying Li. I'm the uh, Director of Life Science and uh, Technology at Gem Pharma Tech US. Uh, I'll be the moderator for today's event, and uh, I'll be introducing my colleague, Santi Chen, who is going to be the speaker uh, for today's webinar. So. Um, to start, let me provide a brief intro uh, of Senti. So Senti Chen, um, uh, Senti is a research scientist and business development professional with over 10 years of experience in autoimmune diseases, immunology, and oncology. She received her training in human B cell development at the Garvin Institute of Medical Research Australia in immunology and followed by a postdoctoral fellowship at the Children's Cancer Institute, also in Australia, which is focusing on pediatric leukemia and therapies. Her projects included efficacy evaluation and mechanistic investigation of a variety of testing agents geared toward uh, pediatric um, cancer. Her research projects resulted in multiple publications in journals such as Blood and Journal of Immunology, as well as national and international awards. Um, Sandy joined us uh, last year, not very long, as an associate director in immunology and oncology. Uh, we really, we're really happy that Sandy um, will uh, join us, uh, join our US team. Um, at Gem Pharmatech, and today I'm really happy that she's going to share her knowledge and experiences in immuno oncology and oncology with us uh, from a um, uh, genetic engineered uh, mouse models and the preclinical services per perspective. So, without further ado, I'm going to ask Senti to provide um, today's uh, webinar. Uh, the title of today's webinar is Immunodeficient Mouse Models for Cancer and Immunotherapy Research, NCG, and the Next Generation NCG Mice. Thank you, everybody. And uh, I'm going to give the stage to Santi. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for your time today. Um, I'm very pleased to have this presentation today about our NCG and Next Generation NCG. Um, so I will start sharing my screen and I'll turn off my camera just to save the, the internet bandwidth. So today I will talk about the human immune system reconstituted NCG models for immunotherapy. I'm the Associate Director of Immuno-Oncology at, uh, at uh, Gem Pharma Tech. So humanized mouse model, what are they? They're invaluable preclinical research tool that enable researchers to perform more translationally relevant studies. Humanized mice contain functional human genes, cells, and or organs. Um, obviously, there's a lot of rapid advancements of cancer immunotherapy. Um, and this year, we celebrated 10 years of the CAR-T, the first CAR-T that was um, administered to, into human, and uh, the, the person remains cancer-free. Um, so there's a lot of interest in this area, and here we can see the, the various uh, agents, and this is only a limited uh, version. Obviously, there's a lot more companies working on uh, cancer immunotherapy. So what is the need? Uh, there's obviously a lot of needs for more and more models that's more relevant um, and, and can reflect the human condition better. So there's two kinds of humanized immune model. So the first one is the immune reconstituted model where the human PBMC or CD34 HSC is engrafted into severely immunodeficient mice. In this, in Gem Pharma Tech, it's the NCG mice. So there's a human target and the human immune system. Second type of humanized immune model is the genetically engineered um, mouse model, or we call it GEM. Um, for example, it's humanized immune checkpoint models where the mouse um, still retains the complete immune system, we just engineered the human target. Um, so there's knocking in of the human target. Uh, for the purpose of today's presentation, I will focus on number one, which is the immune reconstituted model. <clears throat> so a little bit of outline for today's presentation is uh, the, we're gonna talk about the NCG mice, severe immunodeficient mice, which is the backbone of uh, John Pharmatech's um, um, immunodeficient model. 
And then I will talk about how this MISE is being used uh, with human PBMC reconstitution model, as well as human HSC reconstituted model. I will also talk about the advantages and disadvantages of these two version. Um, and then I will talk about the next generation NCG, which is obviously with this, with this model at the top here, there's, there's some um, pros and cons. And we at Gem Pharma Tech continuously want to improve our NCG lines. And we generated the next generation lines to improve the various, uh, the various uh, deficiencies. Um, so I'll talk about the NCG R15, which is to improve the NK cell, um, NCG SGM3, which is to improve the myelid cell reconstitution, um, NCGX, which, is, which has additional mutation so that um, it doesn't require any irradiation, as well as the NCG MHC class 1, 2 knockout to improve the human PBMC engraftment. So we'll get started with the NCG, which is the backbone of our severe immunodeficient mouse portfolio. Um, in this diagram here, you can see from wild-type mice with a complete immune system, and over a period of time, um, various companies and institutions has generated the immunodeficient portfolio. And at GemPharmaTech, again, as I mentioned, we use the NCG line, which is developed by GemPharmaTech. <clears throat> and over time, we have uh, developed the uh, more than 20 next generation line. <clears throat> so a little bit of background of the NCG. It is uh, a NOD background, which has macrophage is sufficient. Uh, we then genetically engineered uh, the PRKDC knockout version um, that drives the absence of T and B cell, followed by the IL-2 RG knockout, uh, which makes it deficient for IL-2, 4, 7, 9, 15, and 21, uh, which makes it absence of NK cell. So the NCG is developed by Gem Pharma Tech, and it is exclusively distributed by Charles River in North America and European market. But for the next generation NCGs, it's available at Gem Pharma Tech only. So <clears throat> the first use of a NCG line is to reconstitute it with human PBMC. Um, PBMC is specialized immune blood cells with brown nuclei, uh, nuclei for example, monocyte, lymphocyte, macrophage. It's developed in the bone marrow and located in the peripheral blood. Therefore, it's called peripheral blood mononucleosal. So PB stands for peripheral blood. It's isolated, obviously, from the peripheral blood, which, uh, the whole blood. Um, to reconstitute this model, um, it's extracted from, from adult, and then we take the PBMC out, and then it's injected into uh, NCG. Uh, depending on the use, sometimes uh, for uh, evaluation of cancer agents, then the cancer cell may be inoculated shortly after the PBMC engraftment or sometimes together with the PBMC. <clears throat> so this resulted in the um, uh, human PBMC NCG bearing tumor for um, agent evaluation. So some features of this model, it's fast uh, reconstitution. So within one to two weeks, it reconstitutes approximately 90% of T cells. A very short lifespan, about four to seven weeks. So this is one consideration as you're designing a study on what is the best uh, model, uh, best cell line to choose. Um, they do develop GVHD depending on the donor. Um, it can be earlier, it can be later. Um, one of the good thing, one of the benefit of PBMC is the donor. Um, each donor can support about 200 to 300. Obviously, PBMC comes from adults, so there is a large, uh, <clears throat> a large volume uh, that can be used to inoculate uh, many, many mice. Um, as I mentioned before, they do have short lifespan. Um, here you can see that on the right, the survival rate here, it, um, it develops DVHD relatively fast uh, within four to six weeks. Um, and as you can see here, the survival, survival rate decreases over time. <clears throat> we do see this as well, uh, looking at the pathology here on the uh, left-hand side, we have the NCG, and on the right-hand side, human PBMC NCG with GPHD. And you can see that there's a lot of human infiltrations with heart, liver, and spleen. Um, some pictures here at the top is normal mice, and down the bottom here, we can see the GVHD uh, uh, with the hunching and full erection happening in the mice. So in terms of the reconstitution level, um, here at the top, we can see the CD45 uh, positive cells. In the first couple of weeks, uh, it usually um, reconstitute to about 90% 
of uh, T cell. So even though the CD45 here remains low, but you can see the CD3, the T cell population already reaches to uh, 90 plus percent. And this remains over um, the subsequent weeks. Um, looking further into the T cells, we uh, you can see there's consistent CD4, CD8, and some TRX population as well. <clears throat> So what can this be used for? And this is an example of a case study where um, the PBMC NCG is being used with uh, um, MDA MB231, so breast cancer line, as well as the RKO, so colon carcinoma line. And uh, on the left-hand side here, it's testing with Texcentric um, with a couple of doses. You can see this nice tumor board inhibition. And the right-hand side, uh, again, also with Texcentric, you can see this tumor board inhibition. Another example, this time is using a T-cell engager, um, a bispecific of CEA and CD3. <clears throat> um, so this one is, the study was conducted at Gemphomatech and it's already a published study. Um, the PBMC and the LST174T, which is a colorectal carcinoma, is injected together. And then not shortly after, the um, uh, um, agents um, begin um, to be injected and evaluation begins. Um, the agent was tested across uh, various concentrations, so one milligram and three milligram, and various version was tested. Here you can see it's as if there's only control and one agent, but actually all of the agents uh, showed uh, amazing uh, tumor growth inhibition. And looking at it individually, here you can see that, they, that each of the agents um, showed very nice uh, tumor regression. Another use of the human PBMC uh, NCG model is for anti-GVHD therapy. As I mentioned earlier, this model do experience GVHD relatively early. Um, <clears throat> so it's a great one to use uh, to evaluate anti-GVHD uh, therapy. And here we can see um, abatacept was, was tested at uh, two different concentrations, 100 microgram and 500 microgram. And you can see that the survival curve improves uh, with increasing uh, abatacept. So moving on into another uh, use of the NCG model is to reconstitute it with human HSC. So HSC is a hematopoietic stem cell and it is a primitive cell that can develop into all types of blood cells. It's found in the peripheral blood, bone marrow, and umbilical cord blood. It's commonly used in transplantation therapy. Um, the reconstitute, it will take approximately eight to 10 weeks to, re to reconstitute um, approximately 25% of CD45 in the peripheral blood. And the main immune cell that will reconstitute is T cells. One of the benefit of this model is the long lifespan of approximately um, 89 weeks. So how do we reconstitute this? We have the human CD34 HSC, the NCG mice will be irradiated. And then, um, and then the, the HSC um, can be injected, followed by the uh, cancer cell after the uh, CD45 uh, reaches to approximately 25% in the blood. Then we have the human HSC and CG bearing tumor, and then this can be used to evaluate um, cancer immunotherapy. Um, again, as I mentioned earlier, this model does have a long lifespan, so that gives you uh, a lot of uh, time to evaluate and monitor um, um, the, the agent that you're interested to test. <clears throat> so in terms of the reconstitution, um, here we can see the CD45 expression, uh, CD45 in the peripheral blood. Um, by about 10 weeks, it reaches um, already, for this particular donor, it reaches approximately 50%. Um, the CD3 uh, cells, it increases over time, which is a, a very standard uh, process. And then the, you can see the CD4 and the CD8 um, remain consistent. <clears throat> As I mentioned earlier, this model is uh, primarily T cell driven. So you can see that the CD19, the, the B cell decreases over time. And uh, particularly the NK cell as well, we don't see um, a very low um, NK cell population. So an example of uh, evaluating a T cell engager using this model, in this case, it's using Raji, which is a B cell lymphoma. 
Um, and it was tested with TriTE and with Cytel, which is a bispecific antibody. And as you can see here, there's nice uh, tumor growth inhibition. So I've described to you um, how to use the NCG model for cancer immunotherapy um, analysis, whether it's using human PBMC as well as human um, HC. Um, obviously the need is dependent on the study objective. Um, if you use the human PBMC, the uh, study duration tends to be shorter due to the GVHD. Um, meanwhile, for the human HSC, the study window will be longer and it can reach up to 89 weeks. So I'll move on to the next section, which is the next generation NCG. Um, there is, uh, this will improve uh, some aspect of the NCG itself. So I'll start with the NCG R15. So why do we develop the NCG R15? Um, as I mentioned in the previous slide, that in the NCG itself, once you inject the um, human CD34 HSC, there is a really low NK cell. So it's not the ideal model for uh, to study the NK cell. But NK cell is very important, and particularly when you evaluate uh, agents that requires ADCC. Uh, <clears throat> NK cell needs R15. Um, to reconstitute, and that's why we knocked in this model with the NCGR15. Um, so one of the first things that we do uh, when we generate this model is to ensure that the R15 is being expressed. And here on the right-hand side, you can see the mRNA expression. In black is the NCG, and in red is the NCGR15. We then confirm this uh, by the IL-15 uh, protein expression. On the right here, you can see the uh, NCG as well as the NCG heterozygous in red and NCG homozygous in blue. <clears throat> so we then want to make sure that the R15, uh, the R15 does support NK cell in three different scenarios. First, we inject the purified NK cell. Second, we also inject PBMC, human PBMC. And third is human CD34 HSC. So the question with each of this model is to understand whether it, we will receive a uh, successful NK cell reconstitution. So the first one here is comparing between PBMC reconstituted versus purified NK. So this three here is the uh, PBMC reconstituted, um, two weeks, three weeks, and four weeks. On here is the NK purified, two weeks, three weeks, and four weeks. So you can see that the PBM, the CD45 um, increases over time, which is a very normal behavior. Um, <clears throat> and in comparison to the purified NK, even though this is much lower in percent, but if you look at the percent of the CD56, which is the NK cell marker, it's much, uh, much uh, higher compared to the NCG um, PBMC alone. Obviously, PBMC is a mixed population, so it's not surprising that there is only a small population of NK cell. Meanwhile, in the pure um, NK reconstitution, it's because it's pure NK, then we would expect a much higher um, um, reconstitution of the NK cell. Um, for the C T cell, the CD3, you can see that there is a high percentage of T cells in this one. And because this is pure NK, obviously there's a, a very limited um, NK uh, T cell in this category. So for the NCG R15, they do have long lifespan. And as you can see here, when we tested uh, over 140 days, the survival is 100%. And for the reconstituted level using the human HSC, you can see that the um, NCG R15 in red, uh, compared to NCG alone, um, it can graph uh, uh, the NK cell much better. Um, and the CD45 expression is relatively um, <clears throat> similar. Um, and then the, NK, the B cell decreases over time as expected. The T cell increases over time again as expected. And then you see CD4 and CD8. So this is a great model for T cell and NK cell uh, study. Um, with all of the reconstituted model, we want to make sure that they're not only reconstituted, but the cell that reconstitutes still functional. 
So in this, we, um, we uh, evaluate the expression of the inhibition and activation marker for NK cell. In this case, you can see that CUR3DL um, is still expressed in the NK cell, NKG2D, NKG2A is also still expressed. Um, just another way of confirming, we um, engrafted with a tumor. On the left-hand side here, we have the NCIH1975, which is a lung um, cancer cell. And on right-hand uh, right side, GIMT1, which is the breast cancer lung. <clears throat> and again, you can see a very nice inhibition. Uh, we then take this one step further, uh, both in vitro and in vivo. So for the in, vi it's for the in vitro here, what we did was we take the NK cell that was reconstituted in this mice. We take it out, put it in the um, put it in a plate, um, and then we incubate it with uh, rituximab or um, together with Raji, or in this case on the right hand side with K562, um, and we still see cytotoxicity again, validating that the NK cells not only reconstitute in this model but they remain functional and can can, um, uh, can uh, work through ADCC. And on the right-hand side here is the in vivo um, testing uh, with rituximab and Vincito. So the human HSC and CGL15 are excellent model for efficacy evaluation of anti-tumor antibodies. So I'll switch gear to the next uh, model, which is the XGX. Um, this model has additional kit mutation which makes it hematopoietic stem cell deficient. This provides the benefit that um, it doesn't require irradiation before um, injecting the CD34 HSC. So this makes the operational uh, site is a lot easier. Um, obviously irradiation or any kind of chemoablation is quite technical process. And if it's not handled properly, the mice can, uh, can die uh, due to the process. So if we don't have to do that, it just makes uh, everybody's life a little bit easier. Um, so when we compare in black, the NCG mice, and in red, the NCGX mice without irradiation, you can see that their uh, rural constitution uh, level um, occur much faster in the NCGX. And you can see the, the T cell also reconstitute quite nicely and the B cell decreases over time. Again, the NCGX is a T cell driven um, uh, model. So when we analyze it at week 13, so at the top here is human HSC NCG with irradiation. And down the bottom is the NCGX without irradiation. Here you can see that there is a better engraftment. And particularly on the first column here, the erythroid population, is much higher in the NCGX. Um, this gives us an idea that there is other application to this model, not only to evaluate cancer immunotherapy, but potentially um, the uh, blood diseases such as beta thalassemia is a possible use of this model. So another model in the next generation NCG portfolio is the NCG SGM3. Um, the S stands for SCF, G for GMCSF, and 3 for IL-3. The combination of these three supports the myeloid cell development uh, with human CD34 HSC reconstitution. So in this uh, figures here, in black is the NCG SGM3, and in, uh, in gray is the NCG, uh, both with irradiation and both with human CD34 HSC reconstitution. And here we can see that the CD3 reconstitute quite nicely. Um, you can see CD4 and CD8 express, uh, um, cells is higher in the NCG SGM3. B cell decreases over time. Um, NK cells uh, decreases over time and also plasma B cells. Most importantly is the myelin component. Um, here you can see in the total myelin cell, the black, which is the NCG SGM3, is much higher across uh, 17 weeks. Uh, when we look deeper into the monocyte, granulocyte, neutrophils, DCs, M1, M2, you can see across the board that the black bar, which is the NCG SGM3, is much higher compared to the uh, gray bar. 
again, validating that this model is an excellent model for a um, myelin cell reconstituted study. Um, so an example on how to use this for anti-tumor um, evaluate, anti-tumor agent evaluation. Um, here we have the A549 uh, model in, NC, in NCGSGM3 with human CD34HC. Um, in this case, it was tested with anti-human uh, PD-1 and anti-human PD-1 with agent X. So this is a fine um, agent, so we, um, uh, we will not disclose what the particular agent is. So you can see here the tumor inhibition in the single agent or in combination doesn't seem to be uh, too great. But most importantly is um, what is happening within the tumor itself. So we take this one step further and analyze the tumor infiltrating lymphocyte or TIL analysis. Um, again, in black is the vehicle control, in red is anti-human PD-1, and in blue is the combination. Um, you can see uh, quite immediately here, the T-reg population is upregulated in the combination. Um, there's reduction of plasma. Uh, most importantly, again, looking at the myelin component, you can see that there is upregulation of M1 and downregulation of M2 in the combination therapy. So this highlights that even though the tumor growth inhibition may not be too striking, but um, certainly these uh, agent is doing, the agent X is doing uh, whatever that it needs to be. And it's highlighting the importance of studying the tumor infiltrating lymphocyte to see what is it doing within the tumor environment, uh, tumor microenvironment itself. Um, so finally, I also want to quickly touch about of the NCG MHC class one and two knockout, which is one of our recent addition to the next generation portfolio. Um, so this model have uh, obviously, as the name suggests, knockout of MHC class one and two. The idea with this model is to improve uh, human PBMC engraftment to reduce the GBHD occurrence, providing a longer um, study period. Um, so I'll walk through this slowly. So in black is NCG alone, in red is NCG um, MHC class uh, one, two, and in um, uh, in blue is the MHC class one alone, and in uh, yellow is NCG beta to M knockout, which is another model that can be used for uh, human PBMC. And here you can see with the GVHD scoring, um, there there is a significant decrease of GVHD. Um, particularly in the MHC class one and two knockout. And looking at the survival curve, again, um, this model um, can last longer in comparison to just a straight NCG alone, which uh, can uh, develop GVHD within a span of four, uh, as soon as four weeks after PBMC graph. Um, so just to quick give you a quick summary, uh, so today we've discussed about the severe immunodeficient mice, the NCG uh, pro, uh, uh, library in uh, at Gem Pharmatech. I've also described how it can be used with human PBMC, um, but keep in mind that GVHD do occur uh, fast in the human PBMC NCG model. Alternatively, you can also use the human HSC NCG, which will uh, have longer study period. Uh, obviously, there's pros and cons using each of the model. Therefore, we developed the next generation NCG, uh, the NCG IL-15, which have the uh, IL-15 knocked in, and it improves the NK cell reconstitution. Uh, the NCG SGM3 with SCF, GM, CSF, and IL-3 to improve myelin cell reconstitution. Uh, we also have the MHC class 1 and 2 knockout to improve the human PBMC engraftment, and the NCGX. Uh, which will allow human CD34 HSC reconstitution without the need of irradiation. Um, last but not least, I just want to give this uh, summary. So this is our recommendation um, on which NCG is best for uh, which immune cell, depending on what is your immune cell research. So for example, if your interest is only the T cell uh, reconstitution, so this is the models that we suggest. NCG, HELES, beta 2 m IL-2, and also the MHC class 1 and 2. If you need NK cell, then let's move to the left-hand side here, the NCG IL-15. 
Um, NCGX or NCGX IL-15 is also another one that will be uh, useful. If you need the MARLET component, then we suggest the NCG SGM3. Um, as, and as you can see from this graph, there are other NCG, next generation NCG that I have not discussed today. Um, so on the B cell side, we have the IL-6 and the BAF and 6 cl 13 We also have other NCG that is being knocked in with, um, for example, here, the CD47, HER2, um, CD228, and some other uh, next generation NCG that will that is useful for other purposes. So if you're interested in any of this NCG, I highly recommend you to uh, get in touch with us. Um, so our details is here. Um, or myself or my colleague, Ji Ying, can help you um, to answer some questions. Um, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time and I look forward to uh, having the discussion. Great, thank you so much, Santi. I think now we can open the camera and uh, let's see whether we're challenging our bandwidth uh, by doing so. All right, so let me check into the Q&A. Um, I'll read a question to you, Santi, so that you can have a break, a little breath. So the question is, do any of your models have functional complement to test CDC? Sorry, can you hear me? I, I'm yeah. have, having a little bit of problem with uh, my computer yeah. here. Yeah, we can hear you now. Um, do you mean functional? Com uh, I'm not too sure I understand the, the question uh, correctly. Yeah, uh, let, let me read it again. And then hopefully, you know, uh, Lena, if I'm, I'm not if I'm, I'm not pronouncing your name correctly, please um let me know. But I'm gonna read again, and Lena, if you can type uh, to to clarify what you meant by compliment compliment, uh, let us know or let Santi know. So the question is, do any of your models have functional complement to test CDC? Do you mean the complement dependent cytotoxicity um, assay? Um, that's a very interesting oh, question. She said yes. Um, I don't, um, that's a very good question. I, I do, I, I unfortunately don't have the answer to that. Um, I don't see a reason why we cannot develop that. Um, that's, that's actually, uh, something for our internal team. Um, yeah, so I apologize. Zing, do you have what? an answer for that potentially? No, to be honest, I have to say, like, I don't even know what CDC stands for <laughs> uh, at this point. So, Lena, if you um, want to continue the discussion, feel free to type in. And uh, otherwise, we'll definitely pass it on to the R&D team. Uh, if we have an answer for you, we'll follow up to let you know. If we don't, we'll, you know, try to develop something in that direction. All right, I'm going to move on to the next question, um, um, which is how do you... you HLA match your tumor cells with a human PBMC donor you use for engraftment in a human PBMC NCG mouse model? I think for HLA matching, we can select the PBMC donor. So we can do HLA typing of the PBMC donor before using it in a study. Um, sometimes it may not matter depending on the st study objective, the HLA match matching may or may not impact the study itself. Um, but if it is uh, an absolute requirement, then we can do HLA matching. Right. Uh, so now I got a couple of uh, technical questions. I'll read it out to you, Santi. So the first one is, um, why, why do you, uh, why is irradi irradiation required uh, when you uh, use human HSC? So if you use human HSC, the radiation is required to suppress the immune system a little bit more. Um, it, it, meanwhile, if it's in PBMC, the PBMC itself is, is um, I guess, already uh, more mature, so they don't need as much uh, um, suppressant. But because HSC is such an immature cell population, and for them to reconstitute well, that radiation is required to suppress the host 
immune system to allow, and also to make space in the um, um, bone marrow to allow the, um, for them to take over um, the, the, the compartment. Right, um, next one also about, um, you know, the humanization or re reconstitution. So when you do immune reconstitution, how many mice can a donor uh, be used for? Uh, for PBMC or HSC? Uh, didn't specify, maybe you can talk about both. Yeah, so so uh, PBMC typically you can reconstitute uh, about 200 to 300, so quite a large number of mice. Um, but then again, when you're designing a study, you have to remember for every study, there's always average mice. So I don't I don't recommend uh, a study exactly the same amount as as the maximum because you have to take them count into the average. Um, in terms of HSC, uh, HSC is uh, um, a little bit more limiting. Um, you can get depending on the various vendors. I know uh, for Gen Pharmatech, we can do about fifty to eighty uh, per mice. Um, again, depending on depending on the donor and, and the mouse model that's being used. Okay, um, I think this is probably a little more technical in a different direction. What kind of animal housing facility is needed for housing the NCG mice? Also, is there any special food water requirements? Well, I think that one is more directed to you, Jean. <laughs> right, I'll, I'll take it. So uh, for NCG mice, since they are immune compromised or even immune deficient, uh, either way, um, um, to call them, they they do prefer or you know uh, live better if the environment is cleaner, the quote unquote cleaner. So it takes upon you know the health monitoring program as well as health testing to make sure in their environments there is no pathogens that can elicit disease in these models. So the um, in terms of special, I would say it's not special as you have to you know, build something uh, really, really new and um, no one has it, but it is, you know, uh, depending on how you care for these animals. Um, food and water, typically people use uh, irradiated food and uh, autoclave water for these animals. And uh, in some facility, uh, such condition are called the, the, the so-called sterile uh, environment, but is a, is a, is a name, is basically means uh, we are providing the animals with a cleaner environment compared to the uh, typical SPF uh, health standard. Um, all right. Um, I hope this answers the question and provides some perspective on how we can raise and care for these animals. Um, I think this is the last question I have uh, for the moment. So. What should one consider when choosing PBMC versus HSC humanization when using NCG mice? Um, there's a few, there's a few um, things you need to consider. Number one is the study objectives. Um, PBMC uh, does give you a much shorter study period. Um, GVHD sets in within four weeks. Um, sometimes you can may see it starting from three weeks. Um, so the, the, depending on the study, again, just keep that in mind. Meanwhile, in HSC, the study period is much longer. Um, don't The number of mice that can be used is another factor. If you use PBMC, then you can engraft a lot more uh, mice. Um, HSC is a lot less mice. Um, the, number of, the number of donors to be used within the study is, is another important factor. Um, our recommendation is to not just use one donor because there is donor to donor variation. Um, at the bare minimum, use two to three. If you can do more, that would be great, but obviously it's, it's, it's not easy to source the donor. Um, in terms of the technical, the more the scientific aspect, PBMC does contain, it, it comes from adults, so it does contain more mature cells. HSC is more immature, so hematopoietic stem cells. So um, if you're studying, if your study requires something that's a lot more mature, certain kind of cell type, then that's another fun situation to take. Okay, great. So I'm going to take a last look into the Q&A and uh, make sure we get every question. Uh, all right, well, I think there's one that we, you already touched upon and sort of provided an answer during the talk, but 
I may just ask it again on behalf of the um, the audience. Do these um, NSG mice, or actually this is NCG mice, develop host versus graft disease? If yes, for how long after the engraftment can we use them? You're muted. Oh, thank you. Um, if it is PBMC, then the, the graft versus host um, would happen uh, fast. But if you're asking host versus graft, the other way around, if it is NCG mice, they are already uh, severely immunodeficient. So that doesn't tend to happen. It's more the graft to the host, not the host to the graft kind of direction. Um, so yeah, I hope that answered the question. Okay, so if let's say um, graft versus host, how long after engraftment can they be used? I guess um, yeah, that's the P real question. For PBMC, study duration is typically within four weeks. Uh, you can get to six to seven if you're lucky, but it, it is kind of pushing it. Uh, for HSC, uh, HSC reconstituted study, it can go up to you know, 30, 40, 50 weeks. So it, it lasts a lot longer. All right, and uh, I don't see any other questions popping up. So um, uh, thank you, Santi, and uh, thank you everybody for joining us today. And uh, we'll conclude for today's webinar and uh, looking forward to see you again uh, in May. All right, bye. Bye everybody.